examples of how uh, the resources freed up or the focus or the mindset of going to the cloud enables you to participate more fully and be more responsive to the business? Yeah, it's a good question. Now, remember, I built this team, so it's not as if suddenly resources were more available. Um, I will say my infrastructure team right now is about four people, which I think is tremendous. And we have some people who help with the uh, desks and, and going around. But, you know, four people infrastructure team with a $18 billion business, I mean, those are pretty good numbers. That said, we do leverage Avanad heavily to help us with that. And a lot of the space, especially around Microsoft and SharePoint, but we've got managed service provider and that's the relationship we're going to have there. So again, we're not doing a lot of our management around things that don't add the most benefit to your business. Now, as I say that, having your networks up, having everything work is very important. Downtime you can't have there, but when that's up and working and running, Nobody in your organization tends to see that as you providing that to them, right? So working in a managed service mode, reducing the cost with the cloud and getting the majority of the focus on the applications and changing those and making those better for the business, that's really where you're going to see the savings. And even when I talk about four infrastructure people, two of them work almost full-time with the application development teams. So really brought down the focus on my team for a lot of the infrastructure work and then we focus back again on applications, data stores, producing uh, new opportunities. We have another question from Twitter, again from Wayne Anderson. And he, and he says, what, is the, what was the single most important trait or factor to contribute to vendor trust for you? My answer is delivery. When I have a vendor who can come, come in and deliver on their promises, that's crucial to me. A vendor who's transparent. So consequently, if there's a problem with what they're working on, they let me know. They let others come in and help. Also really important. The worst thing is for a vendor to go off, have an issue, and let you know later. Um, ones that are very strong in the competencies they have. And then their ability to move resources out when they don't work. Sometimes resources aren't working for talent and sometimes it's cultural fit. The ability to say like this isn't happening and get those changes very quickly is important to me. They have to be trusted advisors with me. And in some ways, the lead of these managed service providers that I've used, those people are on my team. They meet with my team and they feel like a part of our organization. So we don't treat them like they're something different, but those traits uh, really being good at what they say they're good at having transparency into what they're doing, when they're having issues and when it's going well, and then also the ability to, to work with us on resources is key. You, you earn that trust, don't you? Where does Avanade fit into this picture? And you've kind of alluded to it, but where, where, did, where does Avanade fit? They were key with the network rollout and we had a, a, a couple good Avanade partners who are on the floor. And we talk about this network rollout, um, five cities in seven weeks. And some of these offices, 200 desks. I mean, just unloading the boxes sometimes. We changed every technology component on the desktops in that transition. Uh, just getting the equipment out of the boxes, setting it up on the desktop, hooking it to the network. Um, I loved when I was in Chicago and, and half the people we had here to do other things said, I'll come in the weekend and help you with that. So we had people with all different backgrounds uh, helping us basically set up the desktops. And, and those were our Avanade partners with us. So um, we've leveraged them around the Microsoft suite of SharePoint desktop. They help uh, my ISO with the cybersecurity decisions and looking at that. They helped us with a lot of the early architecture around the cloud. Um, I actually remember going to Avanade and talking about what we wanted to do. And uh, one, of, one of their key partners said, you know, everybody else, Mary, is halfway down this, this marathon. You guys are standing at the end line saying, where do we go next? And it was a really good insight to why we were having troubles getting answers to certain questions, because we were in a place other people weren't looking yet. But I've appreciated they've helped us look down that road and look forward and try to find new solutions. On top of that, they really helped build up our relationship with Microsoft, making sure we were talking to the right people. In that relationship with Avanade, how, do you, how did you manage all of these pieces and how did you ensure that everybody was working on the same page and moving forward in in just the right way since you're dealing with multiple organizations 
to your point, people don't always want to tell you about the problems they're having. We had a very open door about that. And it was more, you know, again, I bring up this transparency because what you're talking about and the ability to do this type of work so quickly, if you're, if people don't feel like a group can walk in your office and go, Mary, we got a problem. You're not going to get through it because these problems are going to linger in the background. We had a very open door on that. We talked about problems very openly. Problems were brought to the forefront. And this is where I'm going to get to that agile mindset. It wasn't like, oh, I have a problem. I got to hide it. It's, I got a problem, guys. Help me solve this so we can move on to the next thing. Um, you know, Avanad brought their management around that. I think I, I mentioned their senior person is, is like a, one of my team and a partner to us. Um, I think having, it, it was both the managed services, working with them, but also having this very open mindset of problems are things to discover and solve and not to worry about and hide. But you can't write all, as you said, you can't write all this down into a contract. And so, so when you were working with, with an Avanade, Aven just as an, an example, how did you, how'd you make sure that that trust was there? I mean, what did you do? What advice can you offer other people who are staring into a huge project with external vendors and they're terrified? That, that is a complex question. I've, I've done it a number of times. I think one, bringing them into your team and bringing them into fold and, and treating them part of the project is very important. Don't delegate to them that they're going to do this and you're not going to have any oversight. Um, staying very clear, having those, those meetings with them. We would also have meetings between the technology departments, the business areas we were working with. We talked about issues openly. Um, you have to be very actively involved. You can't be hands off. But on top of it, I guess that's where I talk about moving people out if they're not working out. If you see someone who isn't fitting the culture and the vision, having honest conversations and having a firm that'll have those with you and migrating people out when you see them not either being transparent or making decisions around technology that was taking us backwards. And we ran into that with certain people. Um, I don't, I, I think the big answer there is you can't just delegate it. You still have to own that project. You have to still own that that firm is doing it. And, um, you know, the old trust, but verify. 